Shalom. Kahalem la Yahweh. Bahashem Yahweh Shai. Bahashem Rukwan Kadash. All praises be to the Most High, Yahweh, in the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad. Double honor and respect to the apostles and elders of great Muslim. Coming back at you in another lesson. Save thy people. <clears throat> so I want to briefly talk about obedience and submission and being joined unto our right arm. Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. So when you look at a bride and when she is joined unto the bridegroom, she grabs his arm and she is clinging on to his arm. And before she can even get married, she must be submissive and submit unto him. And he's not even going to choose her unless she is a submissive woman. It's the point that I'm making. But sex is marriage. But the point that I'm making, before she's able to join arm in arm unto that new bridegroom, then she must demonstrate that she's able to be Submissive, just like the elect is submitting to the will of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai, coming back under order. Let's go to Deuteronomy 11, <coughs> verse 1. Therefore, thou shalt love the Lord thy God and keep his charge and his statutes and his judgments and his commandments always. So the elect is that bride, daughter of Zion, that's coming under order. The Bible says, let all things be done decently and in order, submitting unto his will. Verse 2, and know ye this day, for I speak not with your children, which have not known and which have not seen the chastisement of the Lord your God, his greatness, his mighty hand, and his stretched out arm. So the elect synonymously being compared to the calmly and delicate woman, the bride, is submitting unto the will of our Heavenly Father to be joined back unto him or married to him and it comes with humility and submitting unto the order <clears throat> so that stretch out arm is Yahawashai which was the angel of the Lord in the wilderness of ancient Egypt now we're in spiritual Egypt Let's go to verse 3. And his miracles and his acts, which he did in the midst of Egypt unto Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, and unto all his, his land. <laughs> so right now, Esau is the new Pharaoh, the oppressor. So we're going to see a witness a repeat of history. There's an old saying, history repeats itself. And that is because our spirits come back. <coughs> our spirits come back every third and fourth generation. And his miracles and his acts, which he did in the midst of Egypt, unto Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, and unto all his land. So we're going to see this again in America. Lord willing, I'm amongst that number.
Let's go to Isaiah 19 and 19. Isaiah 19, verse 19. Let's go to 18. In that day shall five cities in the land of Egypt speak the language of Canaan and swear to the Lord of hosts. One shall be called the city of destruction. So the city of perdition or destruction is America, spiritual Egypt. <coughs> The language of Canaan is the ancient Paleo-Hebrew. In that day, there shall be an altar to the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt and a pillar at the border thereof to the Lord. So America is a great big sacrificial altar. We're seeing the works of the diligent elect that are laboring and making their bodies a living sacrifice through hard work and risking their lives to do that work, going out into the streets and crying out unto the Lord and prophesying. <clears throat> Let's go to verse 20. And it shall be for a sign and for a witness unto the Lord of hosts, in the land of Egypt, for they shall cry unto the Lord because of the oppressors, and he shall send them a savior and a great one, and he shall deliver them. So this is Yahabashai. He's in the Old Testament. He didn't just show up in the New Testament. So that savior is our right arm being joined back to the Most High through the Bridegroom, Yahawashai. Let's go to Ezekiel 20. <clears throat> the book of Ezekiel, chapter 20, verse 33. As I live, saith the Lord God, surely with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm, and with fury poured out, will I rule over you. So this is the bridegroom, Yahweh Shai, being joined back with the bride, the daughter of Zion, the captive daughter of Zion, elect, that damsel in distress that's crying out here in the daughter of Babylon or spiritual Sodom in Egypt. So that marriage is being rekindled. Let's do it this way. Let's go to Genesis. Let's try this one. <clears throat> right here. Genesis 3, verse 16. And to the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception in sorrow. Thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. So we're being joined. Israel is also that, that woman, holistically. Now we know this is talking about Eve. But this also applies to the daughter of Zion, the Israelites. So we're being joined back unto our husband through our bridegroom, Yahawashai, that's going to rule with a rod of iron. <laughs> so this is... This applies to the daughter of Zion as well, as a nation, the Israelites. Matter of fact, let's go from there to, let's go here.
Ezekiel 20. Because I want to show something. Ezekiel 20, verse 33. <laughs> See? As I live, saith the Lord God, surely with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out will I rule over you. So Yahweh Shai is going to be set back up as the King of Kings, Lord of Lords on earth, delivering his elect, followed by the remnant out of spiritual Sodom and Egypt. And I will bring you out from the people and will gather you out of the countries wherein ye are scattered with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out. So the Lord is coming with judgment, a fire, and he's going to judge those captors, our captors, our oppressors. And the two-thirds of the lights are going to be purged out. Let's go to Revelation 2 and 25. But that which ye have already, hold fast till I come. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. So what we have is this truth. We have a instruction book, guidelines. So the elect is being submissive, obedient, coming back to the marriage vows. Let's go to verse 27. <clears throat> Revelation 2 and 27. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I receive of my father. So the order is being set back up. Yahweh Shai on his throne, the throne of David, and ruling over the nations, ruling over the heathen and Gentile nations. So we know that the elect are joint inheritors with Yahweh Shai to inherit the land of the heathen and to possess them as servants and handmaids, slaves. And I will give him a morning star. That's Yahweh Shai. He that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. And these churches are being preached to now where the Lord has a complete number of a said measure of those that are chosen by the election of grace. So the church represent the saints, which are elect, anointed to receive this gospel. Let's go from there to... Read this one. Let's go to Psalms 28. Psalms 28 or 7. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoiceth and with my song will I praise him. So this song is this doctrinal melody, this truth. The Lord is their strength, and he is the saving strength of his anointed. So I talked about the election of grace that have ears to hear and eyes to see. So the, only the elect can learn, learn this song. Only the elect is being pied piped by this truth. The Lord is their strength, and he is the saving strength of his anointed. Save thy people and bless thine 
inheritance. Feed them also and lift them up forever. So that inheritance is Israel, Jacob. So the elect are joint heirs with Yahawashai. That's going to rule with a rod of iron. So the Bible says, let all things be done decently and in order. So the men must get in order first in order for the women and children to get in order. <clears throat> and that comes with being submissive. I'm just going through the spirit. Not arguing against instruction, guidelines. First Peter 3, <clears throat> let's go to verse 1. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversion, conversation of the wives, while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. Let's read that again. So being subjection is under the rule of your husband. So the men must be submissive to order, the brotherhood. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. So that subjection to your husband is being in the truth for the aquaf out there, which really that order is under a man of the Lord. But the bottom line is, your husband is your Lord. Let's go to six. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do well and are not afraid with any amazement. So the elect men are submitting themselves, doing what Yahawashai said to do, not being hypocrites, not fighting against order, being submissive. Where did I want to go? Let's go to, it's right at the tip of my tongue. Uh, well, we'll go ahead and get this one then. First Corinthians 11, verse 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Hamashiach, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Hamashiach is God. So men that are sincere are submissive, submitting to one another of the brotherhood. Matter of fact, let's go here. Uh, yeah, right here. First Peter five. First Peter five, verse five. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. So this is being humble. That new bridegroom that takes the bride before the captive daughter of Zion can take hold of the right arm of the Most High, being Yahweh Shai, that comes with being submissive to his order, his word. 1 Peter 5 and 5. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with 
humility, for God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. So a good wife has a mind well instructed. So the elect men should be submitting to one another. One of the things or ways to do that is share brothers' lessons or post scriptures while they're teaching on a live stream or after the lesson is posted. That helps to edify the body and feed the flock. <clears throat> Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. So that mighty hand and that stretched out arm is Yahweh Shai. First Peter three, first Peter three and 21, the like figure wherein too even baptism doth also now save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Yahweh Shai, Mashiach. So our mind, our heart must be changed, cleansed, renewed. Verse 22, who is gone? How do we do that? By taking on the image of the Most High through Yahawashai, being washed by the word. 1 Peter 3 and 22, who is gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. So our submitting to Yahweh Shai, it demonstrates order, discipline, integrity, no man can deal with a wife that's not submissive. He doesn't want to deal with her if she's not submissive. So we must do what Yahweh Shai told us to do. And if we don't, then we're hypocrites fighting against order, instruction, guidelines, structure, the tabernacle of David being built is a structure which comes with order and discipline. Let's close out here. Luke 6 and 43. Book of Luke chapter 6, verse 43. Let's go to 42. Either how canst thou say to thy brother, brother, let me pull out the mote that is in thine eye, when thou thyself beholdest not the beam that is in thine own eye. Thou hypocrite, cast out first the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to pull out the mote that is in thy brother's eye. So we cannot teach about order and discipline and maintaining integrity when we lack that discipline, integrity, and order and being subject to one another, submitting to one another. There's a lot of selfish pride, which is detestable. That's the sign of an Edomite. For a good tree bringeth not forth corrupt fruit, neither of a, for a good tree bringeth not forth corrupt fruit, neither doth a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. So men are known as trees. That's why we get the term family tree, which is track and trace through the loins of our fathers. For every tree is known 
by his own fruit. For of thorns men do not gather figs, nor of a bramble bush gather they grapes. So we know who we know what men are made of based off of the fruit of their works, the fruit of their labor. <clears throat> a good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. An evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil for the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh. So preaching the Bible, it's done through divine instruction. And the Most High is not the author of confusion. So if we're being rebellious, but yet teaching, keep the commandments and live or repent, come back to sorrow or penitence, but yet fighting against coming under that same instruction is the sign of a hypocrite. <clears throat> See, let's keep going. <clears throat> and why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? So preaching order and rebuilding the tabernacle of David, but tearing that brotherhood down is contradictory. Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will show you to him he is like. Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built a house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream that vehemently, the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. Building on the fundamental doctrine of of Yahawashai, our master builder. So the builders of the house of David are following the blueprint of Yahawashai. <clears throat> but he that heareth and doeth not is like a man without a foundation, built a house upon the earth against which the stream did beat vehemently, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. So we fall as hypocrites by not submitting to divine order and will from on high. See, it's right here. So rock 1 and 27. The fear of the Lord is wisdom and instruction and faith and meekness are his delight. So great men are meek and humble and follow instruction, <clears throat> not fight against divine order. For the fear of the Lord is wisdom and instruction and faith and meekness are his delight. Distrust not the fear of the Lord when thou art poor and come not unto him with a double heart. Don't come to him with a double heart, double-minded, two-faced, saying one thing and doing another, preaching the Bible, which promotes order, discipline, structure, building, edifying, but yet tearing down, being disorderly and rebellious, not submitting to one another. Be not a hypocrite in the sight 
of men and take good heed what thou speakest. Practicing what we are teaching. So wearing the doctrine. Exalt not thyself, lest thou fall and bring this honor upon thy soul. And so God discover thy secrets and cast thee down in the midst of the congregation because thou camest not in truth to the fear of the Lord, but thy heart is full of deceit. So one man armies, thy heart is full of deceit, not submitting to the brotherhood as a calmly and delicate woman or wife to be joined to the Most High by following the ways of Yahweh Shai, that bridegroom, discipline, not exalting oneself, humble, meek, lowly, building upon the fear of the Lord and doing what he commands us to do. Let's go ahead and end it there. I think I read this one already. Proverbs 28. Let's go to 28. When the wicked rise, men hide themselves. But when they perish, the righteous increase. So that destruction and judgment starts with the wicked two-third Israelites. But the elect is hiding under the pavilion of the Lord, this doctrine. I'm going to go ahead and end it there. The right arm or the right hand of the Lord. Psalms 16, let's go to verse 7. I will bless the Lord who have given me counsel. My reins also instruct me in the night seasons. So that counsel come from men. Yes, it starts with the Holy Spirit, which are working through men. <clears throat> So not resisting his will starts with being subject unto the brotherhood, the brethren, falling under order. I will bless the Lord who have given me counsel. My reins also instruct me in the night seasons. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. The right hand of the Lord is Yahushai. So standing on our rock, which means doing what he told us to do. Leaning on him is leaning on his example, by which he taught. Therefore, my heart is glad and my glory rejoiceth, my flesh also shall rest in hope. For thou will not leave my soul in hell, neither will thou suffer thine holy, holy one to see corruption. So Yahweh Shai showed us how to walk on this earth and is now exalted and lifted up on the right hand of the Most High. So now the elect have an example by which to follow to be exalted in due time. Right now being a base, serving the Lord with humility and fear. Thou will show me the path of life in thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand 
there are pleasures forevermore. Did not Yahweh Shai say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So Yahweh Shai gave us the best example by which we can try to emulate or try to copy or follow. Humble, teaching, preaching daily. He even washed the disciples' feet, an act of humility and servitude. A servant gives service without murmuring or backbiting or complaining. Thou, Psalm 16 and 11, Thou wilt show me the path of life, in thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. So the captive daughter of Zion is being joined arm in arm with the bridegroom, Shai, by submitting to his will, following his lead, being a mind well instructed. I think that's, let's pull it up this way. Sirach 26 and 14. A silent and loving woman is a gift of the Lord, and there is nothing so much worth as a mind well instructed. Doing what Yahushai told us to do, which comes from the Most High. And this is how we're being joined unto him. Through, through the covenant, through the contract, our marriage vows. A shame face and faithful woman is a double grace. And her continent mind cannot be valued. Wow. So the Lord is with those of a broken heart. A lowly spirit. A good woman is submissive. And is a helpmate unto her husband. So she's doing what she what she is commanded to do to guide and direct the house. So now you have the elect members helping to build the house of David. Coming back under divine order. As the sun, when it ariseth in the high heaven, so is the beauty of a good wife in the ordering of her house. The captive daughter of Zion, the elect members, are coming back under order and discipline, doing everything decently and in order, not rebellious, murmuring, backbiting, selfish, self-exhorting. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying all praises to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Erkwan Kadash. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Klam Yeshuala and the Bad Babal. We got next, Lord willing. Barakatam.